Hello and welcome back. I'm Graham Fisher. I'm focusing this time on Winsboro Cotton Mill Blues by Frederick or Fred Jeffsky. Uh, it's a piece for solo piano written in 1979. There is a version for two pianos, but I find that the, uh, the solo option is the much more common one you're going to run into. It's part of a group of songs, the fourth and final song from North American Ballads by the composer, and it's built around a folk song of the same name. The composer Jeffsky is still alive today, still writing music. This piece specifically is a very programmatic piece, and it's very con it's a very um, standard example, I think, of the music you can kind of expect from Jeffsky. That is to say that it's politically charged, which can be expected from this composer's work. Uh, Winsboro Cotton Mill Blues, it's set in Winsboro, North Carolina in the 1930s, and we're really focusing on the plight of the worker at these textile mills in the South uh, and the terrible working conditions that they're um, stuck under. And Jeffsky uses the piano in an incredible way to portray the story that he's trying to show here, using the piano to show the sounds of the mill, the workers singing in the clash between the two eventually. I'm moving kind of quick through this because I have several examples I want to show you and it's a nearly 10 minute long piece uh, and I know we have a five minute timeline. So Winsboro Cod Mill Blues, the structure, generally speaking we have the mill, it's this ominous low playing piano where we're using some extended techniques, non-traditional techniques where we're putting the arm down on the piano or the palm on the piano to make a cluster of chords uh, and then you can hear just through the rhythm constantly and the building and the fading away, this uh, pumping of the mill and the monotonous madness that it kind of brings. We move from that to the song, the blues song that it's set around. It's a, This is a very bluesy setting of the title song that you'll hear in the piano piece. And the, it's a, the song section is really a, a moment of relative peace. It feels like the workers got a break for a moment and then we hear, we hear as it's slowly taken back over by the madness of the mill as they kind of have to go back into this grind in the awful conditions that they're working in. So I want to go in and kind of find a couple moments here where you can really see uh, the programmatic elements of this piece and how effective it is at portraying the emotions and the story that the composer is uh, trying to show. So we have first the mill. We've already been growing for about a minute by the time we get to the clip that I'm showing you. And uh, it's been growing and growing and you can just, you're being overwhelmed by the sound of this mill pounding. Here it is. So next I want to show you, you can hear that mill, I mean it's just, and that's been going, like I said, for over a minute, and we'll continue up until minute five of the piece before we finally get to the theme, although no one's upset about it, because it's this incredibly dramatic building and fading away of the mill in the background. Um, we have, I want to show some context here of the original uh, song, the Winsboro Cotton Mill Blues, this is performed by Pete Seeger, uh, just so you can get an idea of the Old tune. man sergeant sitting at the desk Damn old fool won't give us no rest. He takes the nickels off a dead man's eyes. Buy Coca Cola and an Eskimo pie. I got the blues, I got the blues, I got the wind for all cotton. So you can already see the giant disparity between that and what we just heard from the mill. This kind of upbeat version of the, the blues song, not so much noticing the. the the lyrics where we're talking about how they're not allowed any breaks or anything like that. So here we've come to the peak of the mill. It's gone, kind of driven us absolutely crazy. And now we're going to finally get our theme, the song Winsboro Cotton Mill Blues. I really encourage you, if you find 10 minutes to listen to this, to go and take a listen to it. It's an absolutely incredible piece, and you can feel that moment. We've had this craziness building with the mill, and then we finally get 
a moment of relaxation where we finally hit this song. It doesn't last forever, though. It doesn't last forever, and we end up with the mill coming back, and we're going to feel as the workers are overwhelmed. They're singing kind of taken away by the mill. You can hear the mill in the background in the left hand, kind of ominously there. And it's already devolving into craziness that fast it goes on to the cacophonous ending and then we kind of fade away. We've started all the way down at the bottom of the piano with this ominous lower uh, left hand music and we end at the top of the keyboard with a really just kind of crazy feeling. Again, I really encourage you to take time to listen to the whole thing if you've got a moment. It's an incredible piece. I really like this recording uh, of Roger Wright. I'll link it in the description of the video uh, here on YouTube. Uh, and like I said, this Winsboro Cotton Mill Blues, just an awesome version of programmatic music, of politically charged music, talking about the working conditions of people in the 30s and then possibly also in the time that it was composed, this is being in the late 70s, early 80s. Okay, And so that's what I like most about Winsboro Cotton Mill Blues. I hope you enjoyed my presentation, and I'll see you in the next one.